Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord, God of Israel, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel, the Mighty One of Jacob, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Today's scripture reading will come from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all the lowliness and the meekness, with the long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Once again, that's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and doing and hearing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now we have a couple selections from the Israel Church of Jesus Choir.
that he gave his only son. If we endure to the end, the victory will be won. Late in the midnight hour when your body's aching with pain. Oh yeah. God gives you strength to help you get up again and again. Let me hear you say yeah.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. 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 Another round of applause Hallelujah. for the choir. They really know how to get it fired up in here. That's yes. how it's supposed to be. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord on his Sabbath day. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, man. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to everybody that's listening on the internet and here on the phone line and here in the church. Peace. Peace. Here we are on another Sabbath day doing what we're supposed to do, Amen. as the Lord commanded us to do. Amen. How's everybody feeling? I'm hoping y'all feeling well. I'm feeling good up here. Yeah. Honored to be up here standing before the congregation and talking to the people over the web. We have a lot of things to talk about and go over today. Pretty lengthy lesson. Uh, the Lord had me to come up with uh, as I was going through different things this week. Um, we had to understand that a lot of things that we go through, brothers and sisters, you know, in the pursuit of trying to become God and do what is pleasing to God, you know, we have to learn to overcome all trials, all tribulations, everything that's in this life. We have to overcome it so that we can stand perfect before God. We prayerfully we stand perfect before God without spot or without wrinkle. And in this walk that we have, we're going to have problems, we're going to have trials, and we're going to have tribulation. It's, it's just par for the course. It's, it's for the territory. Anybody that is in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution and will suffer persecution. It's, go, it's going to come. Amen. It's happening. Amen. So know right off the bat that, you know, just because we're in Jesus and we're in the covenant with the Lord, that it's going to be things that we have to go through. The Lord went through it. We're not, we're not greater than our master. Amen. It's good to be as, as the master. So if he got persecuted, scorned, mocked, and even eventually killed for what he, what he was trying to do, for bringing in the truth and living the way that the Lord wanted him to do, the same thing's going to happen to us. So as I was going through some things, the Lord just had me put together a few things that we need to consider. That's the name of the lesson, a few things that we need to consider with this walk. Uh, our people are in the plight that we're in, mainly because we broke our, law, our God's law, statutes, and commandments. But see, it's, a, it's levels to this because we should have people or preachers, people that stand up here where I'm at, should be teaching the unadulterated and uncut word of God so it can prepare the people to walk this walk, to know what they, would, what they need to do in order to be pleasing to God. But of course, you know, like Christ said, there's going to be false prophets coming in his name. You know, so the first line of defense is right there. You know, you have your false prophets. But the Lord doesn't leave it, leave it right there because everybody got to bear their own burden. So the Lord had this Bible made, and you have a responsibility with your own salvation, brothers and sisters. Although the preacher could be up here teaching you lies and false falsities, the Lord still had this word printed up so that you have a, eyes, you have a mind, you can read for yourself what is required of you also. So everything's just not going to be on the preacher. You know, you have to work out your own salvation also with fear and trembling, like the Lord says to do. Amen. All right, so this is a few little things that uh, the Lord had me to consider over the last couple of weeks and even things that's going on in my lifetime, in my life, my lifetime, like I'm going, <laughs> in my life, you know, because uh, we got to check ourselves. We got to check ourselves daily. Thank you. We got to check ourselves daily to make sure that we are, in fact, walking the way, walking right according to the Lord. Because none of us don't all, we don't have it all. And we don't want, we're not going to know that we done completed the missions until that day that we wake up on the first resurrection, or if the Lord comes back and we still living and we get changed like that. We're trying, to, we're trying to make the first resurrection. This is what this is all about. And sadly, people don't understand that. We had a good turnout last week for the uh, clothing giveaway. It was very, very great. It was very nice. You know, mayor came out and uh, we met a lot of people in the community. You know, and we sat and witnessed to a lot of people in the community. And during the witnessing, it's just amazing to me. Sometimes it's just, our people are just, we just don't know. We're ignorant. 
ignorant to the laws and the things that are pleasing to God. And they have, might have an idea of what's going on, but they just don't know. You know, and that's where it comes in. We come in, we have to be patient with them, and we have to, you know, work it, work it out with them. You know, be patient with them and try to correct what they don't know. And it gets frustrating sometimes, but, you know, the Lord will give us patience to do that. So I, I was just considering, as I was putting it together, putting this uh, lesson together, the Lord had me put this uh, lesson together. I was considering all these facets of what, what's going on in the week, you know, the chastisement that the Lord brings upon his servants. And that's it's a, it's, it's a requirement. It's going to happen because we're not perfect. Chastisement is going to come as you go on this walk. So expect it. You know, like a father corrects his child, the Lord corrects us because he wants to make us perfect like he is. And in this striving and walking to be as God is, we're going to have to get corrected. Try, corrected, and tested, and then overcome. So we're going to start this off. We're going to start this off real quick because before we get into the lesson, I want you to turn to uh, John 15. This ain't on the handout, but turn to John 15. St. John 15. I mean, my wife was talking about this this morning. Um, like I said, some people think that they have a relationship with the Most High God, and they haven't even gotten into the fight yet. They haven't even started to have a relationship with God. And the Lord is terrible. It's a terrible God that we serve. And the fact that he doesn't play. And anybody, no one's going to, you're going to be without excuse if you do not come to the Lord. If you do not work out your salvation, you're going to be without excuse because he has everything written in this word. Every, every situation, every, every, every angle that you can possibly look at, that you, the Lord has written it down, and somebody has done it in this Bible. So whereas you can learn from it, learn what not to do, and learn what to do in this Bible, every situation, it requires you to read it, to study it, like the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. You're supposed to study this thing so you can make sure that you are, in fact, walking right. You're not walking for this person, that person. You are walking for God. Your walk is between you and God, your God. And as you walk in, people are going to see you and then going to inquire, why am I doing it this way? But um, start at John 15, brother. John 15, verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to inquire you. We read the Bible here, brothers and sisters. We study the Bible here. You should bring and have a pen. You should have a paper, a notepad. Most importantly, the Bible. Have it here. Take notes. Go home and study this. Go back over the lessons and keep it going in your life because it just doesn't stop here. It's good that you got here. It's good that you're doing what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath day. But if you don't take this with you and do it, what, the, what all does it matter? What is it, what is it for? Take notes. John, John 15, 1 and 3, brother, go ahead and read. I am the true vine, mm -hmm. and my father is the husbandman. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, right there, some people can overlook this whole, uh, this whole thing, this whole uh, phrase that Jesus just said right here. And he said a lot in it. Most of the, most of the people think that they're in a relationship with God. But I wanna, I'm going to point this out to you. I'm going to point this right out to you. Lord have mercy. I thought I was here right there. Please forgive me. Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth much fruit. Right here, he said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, my father taketh away. Now, that means... They're in a relationship with the, with the Lord right now. They're in a relationship. People read this and think that that applies to people that just call on the name of Jesus without being in a relationship with him. You have to be in this relationship with God first and foremost. Some people are not even in a relationship with God at all. They're just in church, right? They're in churches and buildings, but don't have no relationship with God at all. Christ is talking to people that have a relationship that's in the relationship with him already. You're there. You're in a covenant. Now he's saying, he's saying, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And then every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. In this life, you're going to have to, you're going to look for the purging. It's coming. And in, in, in that, you're showing a sign of humility. 
because you don't have it all. This, the first time we start thinking that we got it all together and everything, you're, you're susceptible to fall right then. You don't have it all. The correction is coming, so look for it. And when you get corrected, thank you, Lord, because he's dealing with you as he deals with a son. If you don't have no correction, then you get a bastard. You don't want to be there. So when things going on in your life and everything, guess what? You know, I, I had to deal with this in my own life. Why are things happening to me? You know, why not, bro? Why not you? You know what? You know, you, we have a lot of things that we have to take care of. A lot of things is happening to us right now that we set in motion maybe 10, 15 years ago. And Lord's going to get his payback. Brother Elijah did a good lesson last night. I hope y'all watched it yesterday on the sacrifices of God. God will get his meat offering one way or another. He doesn't forget. It's a good thing that, I'll give you an example. I have children outside of my marriage. You know, before I was doing it, I was a playboy. But guess what? I had to pay for it. <laughs> Just because I got my life right don't mean that that child support don't stop. You reap what you sow. Just because I got my life right and I'm really, thank you, Lord, you gave me an opportunity. Yes, he gave me the opportunity to get my slit so straight, but guess what? You still got to pay for that. All, that. all that running and gunning and funding you was doing back there, you still got to pay for it. This is us right here. We have to get our minds, we have to consider, a few things to consider. Just consider these things. Um, now, go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Keep going, brother. Abide in me, and I in you. As you branch can, as, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So you cannot, if you, you can't do anything. Once the Lord opens your eyes and you come into this revelation that I have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you stay in the Lord. You stay there. Because once you understand that, you can't go outside that. Once you start going outside that, you're going to start forgetting. You're going to start forgetting what the Lord has taught you. You're going to start slowly going back to sin. You can't do that, brothers and sisters. I want you to keep consider this. Keep this on your mind. Just something that, um, that, that I wanted to get to before I got right into the lesson. So we're going to go ahead and start this. Go ahead. Uh, Matthew 1. I mean, Matthew 16. We're going to Matthew 16. Verse 24 through 27. Matthew 16, verses 21, 24 through 27, excuse me. And brother, when you get there, go ahead and read, brother. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. from, who, who, from whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. All right. Then Jesus said to his disciples. This is this, this, to his disciples. He didn't say this to the, to the world. He said it to his disciples. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is what we must do every day. A lot of sacrifices we have to do in order to walk this walk. Because God just ain't going to take nothing. You're not, you're not going to step your way into the kingdom willy-nilly. You're going to really be worthy. You're going to have to be proven to be worthy for the kingdom, to be worthy for Godhood, to be worthy to, get to have the power, even to rival God if that's such a thing. Because there ain't going to be no difference. You understand what I'm saying? So God is not going to put a loaded M16 into a toddler's hand. So the Lord says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Everybody has something that you got to bear. You didn't come into this, all into this clean. Everybody got a situation that's in their life that you got, that's, that's unique to you. But guess what? That can't stop you from serving God. Mm -hmm. You pick up that cross and you keep it going. Because he's going to be your strength to carry it over. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them. All right, then. Okay? Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. I'm sorry. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, whether that be 
physically, someone's got to pay the ultimate price for this thing. Right. Or through your regular day-to-day -day walk, you know what I mean? The things that you used to love and the things you used to do, you're going to have to give all that up if it's displeasing to God. It may not be profitable for you. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Jesus, this is all in red. Go ahead, brother, keep reading. 26. For what is a man profit if, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What, what does it profit? What will you give in exchange for your soul? You are the soul. You know, you being here at the Israel Church of Jesus, you start learning different things. You learn that you are the soul, that your soul ain't inside your body. You are a living soul. Excuse me. What will you give up for that? Anybody that's ever lived, every, broke the matrix of their mother and came through their mother, is going to live forever. You're going to live forever. Where you live is up to you. God is not going to save you in spite of yourself. You have to work out your own salvation, brothers and sisters. For what is it, what is a, what is it a man, what, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Keep reading. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. He shall reward every man according to his works. Far from what I learned when I was in the Sunday church. Far from it. You're going to come and then you're going to get rewarded. You can't die and then get your reward right then. You die, then they put you in heaven. Then when, when the Lord comes, I guess you're going to come back from heaven and get re-resurrected. Re, re, uh, uh, like it, it, if you just take a little time, things that they say doesn't make sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense at all. It's true. But they're blinded. All right, we're going to just pursue this a little bit. We're going to pursue this. The Son of Man shall come in the glory, with his, glory of his Father and with his angels, and then shall reward every man according to his works. But the Lord said, Rath asked a serious question. What does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What's it going to profit you to have everything in this world? Like the prosperity preachers say. And then guess what? <clears throat> At the end, you burn in the lake of fire forever. Let's go, let's go search this out. Turn to uh, Psalms. Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Start at verse 1. We're going to do a couple skip arounds here. Psalms 49 and <clears throat> verse 1. Brother, when you get there, go ahead and read. Hear this, all ye people. Uh -huh. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor, together. Everybody got to hear this. It's not just, everyone needs to hear this. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, uh -huh. and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Okay. I will incline mine ear. No, no, skip down to verse 6. Verse 6. Uh-huh. They shall trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Okay, go ahead. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. For no. the, go ahead. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. All right, so now, none of them, they, they that trust in the wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother. Or nor give God a ransom for him. What does it profit to gain the whole world? You can have all the money in your world, but if you have, if you owe the Lord, you can't, you can't get yourself, you can't buy the Lord, you can't give the Lord nothing for your, the redemption of your soul. Why? Because your soul is precious. So precious that God himself had to come down here and put on flesh and die himself to pay for that. So you think you're going to give money? You think you're going to give something materialistic that God, done, that God, God, owns everything. You think you can give it to God for the preciousness of your soul? I think again, but this is, the, this is our mind. A few things to consider is the lesson. Think about this. Skip down, um, skip the, 
I'm sorry. Oh, go to Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs again. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, 4 through 6. Proverbs 11, 4 through 6. Brother, when you get there, go ahead and read, brother. Riches profit not in the day of the wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Uh -huh. The righteousness of the, the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Go ahead. The righteousness of the up, upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. So this goes, this goes without saying. Some things you can just sit right here and does that need to be interpreted? Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Yeah, you can't buy your way out of that. If you got something coming to you, you're going to get it. And God has a way of collecting. Just look at our situation. Look at our situation as a people right now. We're in the land of our captivity. Under bondage. To somebody, to, to a foolish nation, like the Lord has said, that don't know. Can't buy your way out of it. God is going to have to, God is going to, have to get us up out of this situation. For rich is probably nothing in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth delivereth from death. Righteousness. What righteousness? Your own righteousness? No. God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? We're going to find out. It's his law, statutes, and commandments. That's his righteousness. That's what's going to deliver you. That's what's going to guide you, brothers and sisters. Things to consider. Just think about these few things. You consider these things. Everybody want to do, everybody want to think deeply. Oh, let's get into the deep things of God. You know what? The Lord says it's the little foxes that destroy the bond. It's not going to be the big thing that get us It'll be the little thing, the little thing that you ain't worried about. That's how crafty Satan is. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to come at you with the big thing. He, he won't come at you with that secret sin. It's that secret thing that you have that he's going to get you in. That's why you got to examine yourself every day. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Let's follow this, brothers and sisters. Let's find out what the righteousness of God is. Do, turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Moving right along. Lord had me thinking about this. It's just, you know, you have trials and tribulations in your life, and you, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, yeah, Lord, am I doing something? What am I doing? That'd be the first thing I'd be thinking. Am mm -hmm. I doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. Which you should. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. When, when heat and pressure comes on, on you, and maybe the Lord's trying to get your attention. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Can I take my time? Take your time. It is a Sabbath day, right? Y'all got something to do? Huh? Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13, skip around 16 to 20. When you get there, brother, verse 12, go ahead, brother. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And he do mean with all thy heart and with all thy soul. We'll remember the song, um, 99 and a half won't do. That half will keep you in the lake of fire, brother, sister. You got to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. So it has to me to consider this. What, do do y'all have idols stuck in your heart somewhere? I hope not. I, no, no, I, I'm up here talking to myself about things. You have idols in your heart? Let me see. Uh, now, the, now, Israel, what does the Lord require of thee but the fear of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Go ahead, brother. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Go ahead. 13. Let's get down one. Hold up. I was talking to my wife this morning. When I was in the Sunday church, I said I was always back and forth, but I never understood why. I thought I had a relationship with the Most High God. I thought he understood me. There's no fear in the church. 
Fear is going to keep you. Fear is going to keep you from transgressing God's commandments. Fear, when you start understanding the God that we serve, not that other Jesus that, that Paul talks about, but when we serve the God of this Bible, then you understand that for every action, there is a consequence. Either, you're going to, either it's going to be good for you or it's going to be bad for you, but you, it's going to be a reckoning either way. There was no fear in the other churches because they don't know this God. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Skip down to verse 16. Go ahead, brother. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Ain't that our people? <laughs> Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked like our people is. Mm -hmm. Stiff-necked. Talking to people, telling them that, listen, you got to keep the Sabbath day. You got to stop eating pork. Do that job, man. At my job, he was clowning this week, you know what I mean, you know, because they know I don't eat pork there. He goes out and he bought some chicken, hot dogs, and chicken mixed with pork, and then beef hot dogs. I'm like, you know, you know, he's like, I know what I got for you. He, he. I'm like, listen, man, I said, it's not going to be funny when you get burned up. So it's funny now, you mock now, but you're going to get burnt, bro. Because the Lord don't play that. And everybody, like I said, everybody think they know who the Lord is. Like my brother read earlier today, you know, it's one God. It's one faith. It's one baptism. The God of the whole earth requires things to be done his way. If he says he has a dietary law, he has a dietary law. Just because he ain't dealt with you after your way right now, don't worry. He's long-suffering. And you'll never say that you ain't never heard the truth because I'm standing in front of you. Y'all standing in front of him. Y'all standing in front of whoever you're talking to. We got to be patient. And in due time, if we don't faint, we're going to be good. Hmm. Uh, where am I, brother? 17. Go ahead. For the Lord your God is... God of gods mm -hmm. and the Lord of lords, mm -hmm. a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons mm -hmm. nor taketh reward. You can't pay this guy for nothing. Go ahead. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless mm -hmm. and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Yes, sir. Now, this is what this is what the Lord requires of you. If you're going to be living living and keeping the commandments of the Lord, this is what you're going to start doing because you're going to start emulating your father. This is, what, this is what our righteousness is going to be is going to be hinged upon. When you're doing this, you ain't going to have no time to be worried about the, your monetary riches and everything that you got. You ain't got no time for it. Like my brother said, you know what? If I'm always giving to somebody, I'm always looking out for somebody, that means I got it to give. That means the Lord is blessing you already. For the Lord your God is God of gods, Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a, ter and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor take rewards. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do the same thing. Like, like I said, brother, we shouldn't and sister, we shouldn't be looking at somebody and they look good. And maybe I can be a little bit more kind of them. We shouldn't go after the, their appearance. We should judge righteous judgment. He doth execute judgment for the fatherless and the widow and loveth the stranger and giving him food and raiment. Do we do that? Do y'all go out of y'all way to try to help somebody else? Do you go out of your way to help the, the, the stranger or the fatherless or the widow? Do you? That's a question. Think about it. A few things to consider. Because all this, all this comes in, into the walk with our salvation. And you, you don't think it is. We can sit here and say that we keep the commandments. We can say that we keep the keep keep the uh, the laws and the dietary law, but are you loving your neighbor as yourself? Are you helping the cause of the fatherless and the stranger and the widow, giving them food and raiment? Think about it. Keep on going, brother. Nineteen. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Yeah, to to my uh, my more radical brothers and sisters out there that think that Israel is going to get it's only about saving Israel. Keep on reading, brother. 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shall thou serve. And to him thou shalt cleave and swear by his name. That's it right there in a nutshell. 
cleave to the Lord your God. When he opens up your eyes and know that this is the truth, you cleave to him. And you stay there. Just like we read earlier in, uh, in John 15. I'm the true vine. My father's the husband. All ye that stay in me, abide in me, you're going you're gonna to be okay. You're going to be straight. You're going to be fine. If you don't abide in him, guess what? The father's going to take you and cast you into the lake of fire. You're going to be gone. Go ahead, brother. Are we, are we done with that? Yeah, we done with that. All right, go to Malachi, because we're going to find out how do we get this way. Everybody got to bear their own burdens, and the plight of our people has been brought, brought upon us, not only because we're stiff-necked, but our leaders and people that's sent to us are out of the way. And we're just going to look upon it for a little bit and see some things. Malachi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi 2. <clears throat> Malachi 2, 1 through 10. Brother, when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And now, O ye priests, this, com this commandment is for you. Mm-hmm. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay into heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your ble blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay, in, in, lay it to his heart. Straight to the priest. You know, when the Lord starts start doing judgment, man, he come right to the top, man. And it's going to go filter all the way down. It's going to filter all the way down. So look, look, a message to the priests out there, all around the world here. And now, ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto the name, to my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. And do, they pre do our priests lay it to heart? No, they don't, lay, they don't lay to heart that they're supposed to give knowledge unto the people that's out here. They don't lay it to heart that they're supposed to take the sacrifices of the Lord and, and do what they're supposed to do with it, not feed their own self with it. They don't lay it to heart that, you know what, everything that the blood, that their, y'all's blood is on our hand. They don't, they don't lay it to heart. They only, as the Lord said, they call them greedy dogs whose bellies can never be filled. They don't lay it to heart. Keep on reading, brother. Three. Keep on reading. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will corrupt your heart, your seed, and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, mm. and one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, mm -hmm. saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for, for the fear wherewith he feared me, and was afraid be, before my, my name. The, the law of, of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and did turn away many away from in, in, iniquity. All right, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what the priests are supposed to do. And when they came out of Egypt, and, and when the Lord was putting them in their land, and he gave them these laws, statutes, and commandments, they was right for, for a little while. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave, and I gave them to hear for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. There it is, the fear again. Because they feared the Lord, they made sure that they taught the precept the right way. They made sure that they did everything line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, teaching the people what they're supposed to do. Levi, the whole, whole Israel is a microcosm of the whole world. Within Israel, we are the priests, but then God gave the priests within the priests for the service of the temple. Of doing things. This is, how, this is how the whole world is going to be set up. And when the Lord comes back and set his kingdom up on this earth, he's going to have them again. Go ahead, brother. Seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Now, the priest's lips should keep knowledge. We shouldn't be up here just doing what we want to do, saying what we want to say. We should keep knowledge. Why? So that we can teach or, or, or edify the church so that they can learn what, it, what is required of them so that they can get their, their walk straight with the Lord. 
Anybody that's up here at this position right here, you know, like my, like my teachers say, man, you want to be a priest, man, you might really, you really want to consider that because you just don't only really have your own blood on your hands. You have everybody else's blood on your hands. No one up here should take this lightly at all. This is a serious thing that we're doing right here. We are, we are swearing with what the Lord said, uh, we are swearing on his name, keeping his name right. We can't pollute his name. For, my priest, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Go ahead. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble. Ain't that what they're doing? I can eat whatever I want to eat as long as I pray over it? The Sabbath day is Sunday, the first day of the week, when Sabbath is synonymous with seven. God himself separated. It caused the people to stumble. I had to consider this and think about this. Because while I was going over and, and talking and witnessing to the brothers and sisters at a, a, the clothing giveaway, I just had to think about how many people were just oblivious to the things of the Lord. And you had to really sit down and when you, I mean, explain things that we feel like, like it's, it's, it's simple to us. Because we've been in the word, but people really don't understand that, you know, the, the simplicity of Christ. They've been so brainwashed. It's, it's, uh, uh, brainwashing is, is powerful. It's, it's amazing how powerful brainwashing is. Man. Mm -hmm. You really think you have a relationship with God without keeping his covenant. Because everybody watching on TV, you know, we're here. Pray the sinner's pr prayer with me. I am a sinner, Lord. Help me. Come into my heart. Forgive me. I'm saying, you've just been saved. Go out there and do whatever you want to do. Setting them up for failure. Cool failure. Mm -hmm. But like I said, everybody got to bear their own cross. Everybody got to study to show themselves approved to God. Lord had this Bible written in every language that Israel was going to be scattered in. And you have your mind and you have eyes to see and you can read for yourself. But ye are departed out of the way, and have caused many to stumble at the law, and have corrupted my covenant of Levi, saith the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 9. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and based before all people, mm. according to as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Have we not all one father? Huh? Isn't there one God, everybody? That's right. Everybody says, you know, it's another thing. It's, it's public. Everybody say there's one God, one faith, one baptism. But I'm Baptist. Mm -hmm. I'm Methodist. Mm -hmm. I'm not solid. One God, man, one way. Simplicity. Go ahead, brother. Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? That's what we do. This is just how we got in our situation. This is just things I was considering. The Lord just had me considering over the... How, how do we get into this? How do we do this? How, why are we in the position that we're in? And continue to stay there, and people don't want to come out of it. Uh, you done with that, brother? No, we don't. Come on, let's, let's, let's follow it down. This is, a, this is a few things to consider. Go to Micah, because it don't stop. Just a few books back, a couple books back. We're going to Micah, chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. The priest's lips should keep knowledge, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, brother. Micah 3, start at verse 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And I said, Hear, I pray you, of, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Is it not for us to know judgment? And I said, Hear, I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Isn't it for us to know judgment? Didn't the Lord come to us and our people and gave us all his good laws, all his good statutes, and sh to show the heathen or the nations how to live? Everybody in Israel, including the children, should know about our God's law. 
should know what righteousness is. They should know. Why should they know? They tell you in, in, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, we're supposed to train up, a we're supposed to teach our sons and our sons' sons, right? When we're at the table, when we're walking by the way, when we lay down, when we get up. That means you always teaching them. So that our children should be more wiser than the Gentile children or the Hamite children when it comes to the laws of God. Verse 2, brother. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. This is, this is, what, this is what they do. This is what, our, this is what we do what, when we do it to our people. Go ahead. I mean, this is spiritually. Go ahead. Who also eat the flesh of my people. Mm and flay their skin from off them, Go and ahead. they break their bones and chop them in pieces. This is, what, this is what it is. This is what it's like when you're not teaching the word of God properly. Go ahead. As for the pot, and as a flesh within the cauldron, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but ye will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. So they do all this to our people. You teach it, get up here and teach the wrong things, and they have people going the wrong way, and then you want to call upon the Lord. That's what they do. Call upon the Lord like he hears you. Lord, so I ain't going to hear you. I'm not even thinking about you. I got something for you, though. I got something for you. Go ahead, brother. Five. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, mm -hmm. peace. peace. And he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Go ahead. Therefore, night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. So anybody, that's why I'm, anybody that say that they a prophet and they don't keep the law statute and commandment, I'm looking at them real crazy. Therefore, night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision. They don't, what vision do they have? A vision of their own imagination. If they're not in Israel, there ain't no prophets. Where are all the prophets at? The Lord said, surely I will do nothing but reveal my secret to my prophets. He said that to Israel. He didn't say that to no other nation. No Gentile nation or no Hamite nation. But go ahead. Let me see. Um, and it shall, be, it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers... No, you didn't. Go ahead, brother. Then ahead. shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of and judgment, mm -hmm. and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Yes, he is. Go ahead. Hear this, I pray you. Ye heads of the house of Jacob, and the princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They built upon Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads of their, thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof te uh, teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among, among us? The heads thereof judge for reward, the priests thereof teach for hire, the prophets thereof divine for money, yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Ain't that what they do? <laughs> Send in for this prayer towel, a small donation of $150. Pay for this book right here. Pay for this. You know, you're paying all the time for your salvation. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bishop, super preacher. Yeah, he's coming. Listen, everybody take a, a super offering for him. We need you to come to the church. I, I ain't coming unless you paying this. I'm going first class. That's what they do. For hire. Why are we in a situation that we're in right now? They, they got theirs coming to them. But, you know, we like to show examples of things around here. 
uh, the, heads, the heads thereof judge for reward, the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? We want to show you an example of this, brothers and sisters. Let's turn to 1 Samuel, break that. Let's turn to 1 Samuel. Nobody at the Israel Church of Jesus take anything from anybody. We all work. Even though a prophet is worth his hire, we could, but we choose not to do that here. But uh, the Sunday preachers, man, they take it and run with it. They run with it to death, man. I mean, it, 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 it's sad. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh. Money, get going, throwing money on the, on the table. And they, Ooh, running over the money. Oh, prosperity, prosperity. It made me want to cry, man. Because our people would just soak it up like it's all good. Like, like this is what it's supposed to be about. First Samuel chapter uh, two. First Samuel chapter two. One, two, three. Uh, um, I just brought this, I just put this in here about Hannah uh, Hannah. Because she was the mother of uh, Samuel, one of the great priests and prophets of the Lord. Um, she was getting, uh, not provoked, but uh, laughed at and scorned because she was uh, without child. And she went and prayed to the Lord and inquired of the Lord to give her a child. If he gave her a child, then he would, she would dedicate him back to the Lord. So... Um, as she's praying, I just want you to see this prayer that she prayed to the Lord because the Lord has granted her her petition. But let her talk about how, what this God, what kind of God she serves and how this God is. When we get here to Hannah, go ahead and read this. For, uh, two and one. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. Right. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Mm-hmm. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Have some understanding. Keep on going, man. This is it. It's always one God. One God. Keep on going, brother. Keep on going. Keep on going. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Go ahead. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, and the Lord is a God of knowledge. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. He's not just going to aimlessly worship God. He does, he's not like that. You're supposed to in every, have understanding in everything you do. You're supposed to sing with understanding. You're supposed to pray with understanding. You're supposed to praise with understanding. He is a God of knowledge, brothers and sisters. Not, 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 of God, not a God of feeling good, jumping up and shouting and, and, and spewing gibberish all over the place. He's not a vain God. He does things in order and for, with purpose. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. Go ahead. And by him, actions are weighed. By him, actions are weighed. Skip on down, brother. I just want to put that in there. We're going to skip down to these priests right here and show you what these priests were doing. These sons of Eli. Go ahead, brother. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, that they knew not the Lord. They were worthless. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the Mm -hmm. priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for him for himself. Mm-hmm. So so they did in Shiloh until all the in Shiloh, excuse me, until all the Israelites that came thither. Mm-hmm. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, 
Give, give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. Then, hold on. Then you say that the prophets, the priests, they make my people to err? Now, when you're reading this, we're supposed to bring knowledge to the brothers and sisters about this. It don't seem like they is doing something wrong, does it? Does it seem like they're doing something wrong? We're going to find out exactly what they is doing. It says that now the sons of, of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. The, and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in seething, and with the flesh shook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it in the pan or the kettle or the cauldron or the pot. All that the flesh shook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's uh, servant came and said unto the man that sacrificed. Oh, I didn't give you that, but I didn't get that far, did I? You didn't get that far, did you get that far? Yeah, we did. Okay. Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not sodden the flesh, but give thee raw. You stop right there? Yes, sir. Go ahead, keep on going. 16. And if any man say unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as, they, as thy soul desireth. Then he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Now the, now the priest is supposed to take the sacrifice, whatever they, they're going to sacrifice to the Lord. Take it, burn it. Then take, what, take afterwards for themselves. Not supposed to take, it, take, their, take their portion first. We're going to read this. We're going to read what they're supposed to do. Come on, go to uh, Levi, uh, Leviticus. Go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go Where, to 17. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred abor the offering of the Lord. All right, let's find out about this offering of the Lord. Go to Levi, Leviticus 3 and 12, because they're doing the same thing today. We don't have no animal sacrifices, but guess what? We got money, and we got our time, and everything that's precious, that they're taking away from the people and using it for themselves to feed their own selves. So I'm going to make it plain for you. Exodus, I mean, uh, Leviticus chapter... Two. I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. Leviticus chapter 3, 12 and 17. Leviticus chapter 3, 12 through 17. Like I said, everything's in this Bible. Everything's in here. What the priest was supposed to do, how they were supposed to... Uh, their office, what they were supposed to, how they were supposed to sacrifice when the people came and did a sin offering or a meat offering or any kind of offering, there's a certain way that it's supposed to be done, and it's all written in here. Well, if you're a New Testament Christian, you wouldn't know that. Leviticus chapter 3, and when you get to verse 12, brother, go ahead. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. Go ahead. And he shall lay his hands upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation, mm -hmm. and the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. Go ahead. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord, mm -hmm. the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, mm -hmm. and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the claw above the liver, with the kidneys it shall be, it shall shall be he taken, taken away. away. Go ahead. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. All the fat is the Lord's. They ain't supposed to take water. They're supposed to burn that to the Lord. Keep on going, brother. And it shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. All right. That's offered to the Lord. You're not supposed to do that. All right. If it's offered toward the Lord, you ain't supposed to do it. You ain't supposed to have it. You ain't supposed to eat none of it. You ain't supposed to take, touch it. All right. Uh, turn to uh, turn back to chapter two. Just back up a little bit. One through three. It's one page. Chapter two, verse one. Brother, go ahead when you get there. Go ahead. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord. His offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it, and put frankincense thereon. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring it to Aaron's house, and Aaron's sons and priests, 
and he shall take there out his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, mm -hmm. and with all the frankincense thereof. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Now, you, now this is what's supposed. To, this is how it's supposed to happen. They're supposed to take their meat offering, take it to the priest. The priest is supposed to cut the kidneys, cut everything out, whatever needs to be cut out of it, and however it needs to be done. And then they're supposed to burn it. Then whatever left, they give it to them. Why? Because the priest has no inheritance. The priest had to do perform the uh, uh, the work of the temple. So the people was pretty much supporting the priest. But these people, but these priests, these sons of Bilal, they was overstepping their bounds. And it shows that they ab abhorred the offering of the Lord. They wanted it for themselves. They was getting fat off the, off the offering of the Lord for themselves. Now, it's already in here, and it said that, you know what, they can eat off of the offering that was theirs. Ain't that what our preacher, the, the, well, ain't our preacher, but that's what our uh, Israel and the Sunday church, they do that same thing today. They will, they will eat off the people. They'll take from the people so they can fatten up their own pockets, get houses, get jets, do all they want to do, and abhor the offering of the Lord. And they're not teaching the people what is needed to be known for the, to, for the people. They're not even giving them bread. Why you pay for that which is not bread? Why? But when you don't have no knowledge of the Lord, when you don't have no fear of the Lord, it's easy to, to come up here and I can sell you a bridge because you don't have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't the priest's lips hold knowledge? So if the priest don't teach you nothing, you don't know nothing. So if a person like myself or a person like Brother Bowie, a person like my Brother Elijah, Brother Brandon, you know, Brother Jedediah, we come to you and tell you, Brother Nate, hey, listen, we give you all what the Lord said to do. You're going to look at us like, what's the first thing, what's the first thing that people say? You give, them, you give them some cold scripture. I got to go ask my pastor about that one. Mm -hmm. Blind leading the blind, man. So they take this meat offering and they are using it for themselves and fattening them themselves up, which is, and like the Bible says, it says, uh, it is most holy unto the Lord. Let's see what the Lord say. Turn back to Samuel. I mean, turn back to Samuel, verse 2 and 22. We're going we gonna to look and see what the Lord's going to do to these guys right here. They, they just proclaiming they sin like Sodom, man. <coughs> turn back to 1 Samuel. First Samuel 2 and 22. We're going to keep on reading into the story because we left off where it says, um, in verse 17, Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. If we can get to 22, go ahead and read, brother. Now Eli was very old mm -hmm. and heard all that his, that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all of this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear ye make the Lord's people to transgress. You're talking about you making the Lord's people to transgress, but you're taking all, all, all the fat offering for yourself, and you're sleeping with all the women, and you're just talking like cordially about this. The Lord said he is no respecter of persons. They are supposed to have got dealt with. Right then, what happened to, uh, to uh, Aaron's son that put strange fire before the Lord? Didn't the Lord break out and kill them? Nope. And you better not cry. Come and tell your brother to come. You better not cry or the Lord will get mad at you. When it comes to the Lord, you, you're supposed to sanctify the Lord's things and do what you're supposed to do for the Lord. And we up, and he up there, these are priests. And they're, I'll let you, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. 25. Go ahead. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. Mm -hmm. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Who's going to entreat for him? Money ain't going to profit in that day. Your, your, your status with the Lord ain't going to profit in that day. 
If you do something against the Lord, the Lord is going to collect. And can't nobody say nay. Go ahead, brother. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, mm -hmm. because the Lord would slay them. Yeah, he's going to get them. They ain't going to hearken. Just like Pharaoh's heart was hard. No, nah, hard. Nah, that's hard because the Lord wants to do something to these cats. He wanted to do something to them. Go ahead, brother. 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of, of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, mm -hmm. to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? The ephod. Mm -hmm. And I did, and did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Now the Lord telling you, didn't I give you this? I did this. I did this for you. You had, you had your offering. Why are you messing with mine? Go ahead. Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice? And at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy son above me to make your make yourselves fat with chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. All right, hold on. So, so he says, then, did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be a priest, to be my priest, on my Aaron, and to offer upon mine altar to burn incense and to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto him, and, and I did give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel. Why there, why, I mean, why, wherefore kick ye at my sacrifices and mine offerings, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honors thy sons above me, to make thyself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of my people Israel, of Israel my people. Why are you taking from me? And why are you going to have preeminence over your son? If your son and your daughter transgress God, guess what? You better, do, you better choose God over them. If your mother and your father transgress God, you better choose God over them. God is no respecter of a person. You're going to get dealt with. If, uh, uh, Aaron's sons went and sat and ate and seen the Lord. And a few chapters later, the Lord destroyed them. Just because you you here with me and you think you got it all sweet and good, you know, don't think, don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable with me. You better walk before me with fear and trembling. And definitely don't take none of my, my I, I would take my money. Take the offerings of the Lord. People take from the Lord, it's like, it's like, well, you don't pay your tithes and offerings. If you, that is for you. That's not, that's not for me. That's for you, because the Lord's going to send you to the curse upon you if you don't. Where are we at, brother? 30. Go ahead, brother, read. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that, that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. Mm -hmm. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me for them that honor me, I will honor. Mm -hmm. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. What's that lightly esteemed? What do y'all think that lightly esteemed going to be? Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Burn. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. Mm, mm, mm. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, sh shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. The Lord pronounced judgment on them. Keep on going. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons on Hopni and Phineas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And one day they're going to die. The old days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, and that there shall not stand an old man in thine house, 
and thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all thy wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. Everybody in this lineage dying early. And the man of thine, of thine, whom I shall not cut off from thine, from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart, and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of thy age. And a little later on, you start seeing that they go to war with the Philistines, and the ark of the Lord is taken. The Philistines, uh, uh, Hopme and Phinehas died. Eli gets word back. You can read this all on your own. It's in chapter 4. He gets word back, and then he actually dies off. But this is all what the priest is doing. He's making our people to err before them. They're sleeping with, the, sleeping with the women, which is what they do today. Same thing happens today. It's nothing new under the sun. You know what I mean? Wherever, that, wherever iniquity is and wherever they are pouring the sacrifice of the Lord, it's going to be every type of sin that you, is, that's possible that you can imagine that's in these churches. And they're still doing it to this very day. Something to, some things to consider. Uh, is that it, brother? Yes. Chapter 3. Go to chapter 3, brother. 1 Samuel chapter 3. <clears throat> Once again, got ahead of myself. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 11 through 14. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 11 through 14. And when you get there, brother, go ahead. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I, when I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told them that I will judge his house forever for, ever, for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile, and he strained them not. And, and he restrained them not. Go ahead. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. So this God is, this God is serious. They said we deal with a terrible God. There ain't nothing that he going to do to atone for what he did. Everybody got to bear their own burdens. Everybody got to bear their own iniquity. If, if you're getting corrected, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my correcting, but you don't want nothing like this to happen to you where you can't, get pur you can't purge yourself out of this. What was going to happen to him was going to come, no matter how much praying you do, no matter how much you join hand with somebody here, pray for me. If God got something for you, you're going to get it. And it don't matter what position you're in, because God is no perspective of a person. And guess what? He starts judgment at the top, and he works his way all the way down. So that should be an example for us, or an example for us, brothers and sisters, that you know what? Do what you need to do. You don't get no free pass. Uh, right? Are we done there, brother? We're done. Yeah. Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah, because nobody gets a free pass. Jeremiah chapter 5, 23 through 31. Like I said, this is just something to think about, like, wh why are we in our situation like we're in, where it comes from, why are people are ignorant like they are, what you need to do to keep yourself in right standings for the Lord, how your attitude is supposed to be towards the Lord. Because half of, some of our stuff is done because we just aren't, we just aren't uh, happy to serve the Lord just because God is. We make it grievous to serve the Lord. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, going, I'm going to Sabbath class. I'll be there. You want that? You think the Lord want that? Yeah, I got to give my, you know what? Yeah, I got to give tithes, man. Dad. You think you want that? You think, would you want it to be served like that? Would you want, you know, if, if, if it came to you and do you, do you asked the Lord for something, do you want the Lord to be like, uh, I don't know? Or do you want him to go ahead and give it to you? Just because God woke, woke you up this morning, gave you an opportunity, opened up your eyes to have knowledge. Jeremiah chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 23 and 24. Let's see about these people, man. And when you get there, brother, go ahead. For this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. 
they, they are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. Mm -hmm. He reserveth un unto the, us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Go ahead. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. He said, your, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. It all goes downhill. If the priest don't teach, don't teach you nothing good, you don't know nothing good. But then if you don't even go to try to search it out for yourself, not, you know, you're still gonna, it's still going to keep going on. It's going to be perpetual. This is, this is why we're in the places that we're in right now. It's perpetual. When are you going to come out of darkness? When are you going to come out of, out of sleep? And search the Lord for yourself. Um, but this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. Er, er goes, the people, God knows my heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. He definitely knows it. Mm -hmm. From your youth, wickedness is sold up in your heart. They are all revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. Why, do, why don't they say that in your heart? Because you don't even know that you're supposed to fear the Lord your God. Because the priest don't teach you that. If I got to fear God, you know, what, what kind of God wants you to fear him? The kind that's going to kill you if you don't do what he say to do? <laughs> That giveth rain both the former and the latter in this season, he reserved unto us the appointed weeks of harvest. I mean, you're going to get what you need. You know, we don't, none of us are farmers right now. But when it's time for you to get what you're supposed to get, what the Bible says, seek ye, sir, seek ye first the kingdom of the Lord and his righteousness, and then all other things will be added unto you. When it's your time to get what you need to get, don't keep your mind on the riches. Don't keep your mind on what I'm going to eat. Don't keep your mind on what I'm going to wear. Keep your mind on these law, statutes, and commandments, making sure my walk is right with the Lord. And guess what? If you need to eat, he's going to take care of you. If you need a roof over your head, he's going to take care of you. I need to get my career right. Listen, some people might, you might need to settle for working at McDonald's. Oh, nigga, I, I'm better than McDonald's, brother. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Seek the riches, because it's little. It's little things. It's the little things. It started McDonald's. You know, Mom, you know, I can't get that. Now, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead and try to get this corporate job, but it requires you to work on a Sabbath day. Instead of making 13000 a year, you make 50000 a year, but now you're transgressing God's law. I need to, it starts little. It's always gradual. Get your mind right. Your iniquities have turned these things away, away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Go ahead. For Why? Among, Why? Go for, ahead. For among my people are found wicked men. Uh huh. They lay wait, as he that that set a snares, they set a trap. They catch men. <laughs> oh, they lay wait on you, wicked men. They lay wait on y'all. Set traps. Yeah. Sow your seed. Sow your seed and reap the harvest. Sow unto, sow unto your seed. You got to pay for everything. Come on, man. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. 27. As the cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxing rich. They are waxing fat. They shine. Yeah, they shine, right? Their houses are full of what? What? Your riches. Mm -hmm. I got a summer home. I got a Bentley. The, preach, the preachers of L.A. Was it the preacher of L.A.? Was that what? Mm -hmm. Preacher of Atlanta and all that. Mm -hmm. it's disgusting, man. Yeah. Sick. I, I, see, I see them. I, always, I, see, I see the, the rappers and everything. They got it. We work for the Lord. Why can't we have it? We supposed to have it. I'm disgusted. With much knowledge comes much sorrow. Comes much sorrow. Because you know what time it is. When I was ignorant, my wife was talking about it today. When I was ignorant, people, people going by. They just going by, going by, they oblivious, they going to the shore or wherever they going. And my wife said this today. She said, uh, you know, 
I hope you understand what I'm saying, because I'm not like this. Because I was, she's like, um, how do you say it? I miss sometimes I I I miss you know being ignorant that way. And I, well, she didn't say it so sort of sort of like that, but I was sitting back like, all right, lost <laughs> wife, don't be trying to look back. <laughs> no, but she was saying, but you know, but like when you're ignorant to things. You know, when, when, you did, when you thought you were straight, you Jeez. know, we was thinking about how if we go to a party or something on Saturday, we preparing all day happy for it. And then on Sunday, we're going to go to church and it's going to be all good, you know. But we know better now. All them people that's not going to, and we don't know where they're going. We can speculate. I'm pretty sure they ain't going to the Sabbath class. But just think about all the people that you passed coming here to a Sabbath class is all them people that may possibly be going to the lake of fire. Yeah. The Lord saved eight people and destroyed billions of people, just as many people as it's about nine billion people on the earth right now. And we're living in the last days, brother. And they were living much longer than, so they were living full lives, 800, 900 years old. People being born. How many people that the Lord killed all of them and only saved eight people? Do you think about this, brothers and sisters? You might want to, man. I mean, just a few things to consider. A few things to consider with this walk and how we living with the Lord. We all put on the front and we put on the show in front of each other, but guess what? When you go home, you can't front in front of God. And the Lord will check you. He'll check you. Trust me. <laughs> He'll check you. Um, where are we at, brother? 28. 28. Three. Yeah, go ahead. They are waxing fat. They shine. They shine. Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. Mm -hmm. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of their, the needy, do they not judge? Now, when we read in Deuteronomy chapter 10, didn't the Lord say that he judges the, he, uh, uh, let me get it right. Hold on, let me get it right real fast. So I don't want to misquote that. He doth execute judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and loveth the stranger, and giveth food and raiment. This is what the Lord does, right? Now look at what these wicked men are doing. Read that again. Read that over again, brother. They are waxing fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They overpass the de deeds of the wicked. So they let the wicked do whatever they want to do. Knock it out. They don't even correct them. So in, in not correcting them, they in fact strengthen the hands of the wicked, don't mm -hmm. they? They strengthen them because they think they're right in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can do this. The pastor didn't even say anything to me. I can have as many women as I want. I can store as much money as I want. Go ahead. Agree with that. Read it. <laughs> Over past the deeds of the, of the wicked, they judge not the cause. They judge not the cause. The cause of the fatherless. Go ahead. Yet they prosper. Yet they prosper. They, they, they prospering though. All these big houses. All these, it, it, it kills me. It almost makes me want to be like David, man. Like, you know. Maybe I should do a little something. Just choking. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. That's not worth it. What does the gain? What does the profit of man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Surely the Lord, he, Lord put him in slippery places because you know that's going to be their destruction at the end of it. Go ahead, brother. And the right of the needy, do they not judge? The right of the needy, they do not judge. Don't sound like they keep the commandments of the Lord, so they don't have no. They don't have no relationship. Go ahead, keep on reading, brother. Shall I not visit for these things? Shall I not visit for these things? Say the Lord. Do they know who I'm? Do they know who I am? They don't, they they obviously don't know. Shall I not visit to the Lord? Go ahead. Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Keep on reading, brother. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. What's what's committed? The prophets prophecy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. A wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. That one uh, that ain't nice. That ain't, that ain't all wonderful. It's terrible, man. Mm. Go ahead. Am a wonderful I, and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets 
prophesy falsely. I heard, I got a word from the Lord tonight. Y'all all, all going to have good jobs tomorrow. Your house is going to be built. You're going to get that car. Sow into your blessing. That's what the Spirit of the Lord told me. Just this morning, when I went to my bank account and seen it was less than $1,000, so I need two from y'all today. Pass the plate around, ushers. <laughs> Let's go. It's what they do, man. I mean, it's so bad. I mean, they blatant now. It's so bad now, I, I can pretty much be sure, because I, I, I told my wife before, man, we got, they got us, man. They got us. They seen us coming, man. We went to, last time I went to a Sunday church, you know, we live, I'm living with somebody, you know, I was homeless. We were homeless. And we go to one of my cousin's church, and they was like, you know, oh, yeah, we have a pastor, and he came from such and such. We're going to give a special blessing. So, oh, you know, I'm working on my last hundred dollars. <laughs> last hundred. I'm like, you know, good orator. You know, they make you, they pay. Listen, you know, the Lord, he need three, three, three hundred, three, three of y'all. Give five people to give a hundred dollars. And I know some of y'all are, y'all might need a house. Y'all might need a place to stay. I was like, maybe that was, maybe, maybe the Lord's talking to us. Maybe we need to do this. Now, my wife knows. Now, if anybody know my wife, my wife is like, listen, we need this money. I'm not, <laughs> I'm like, do it. It's going to be okay. Promise you, as soon as I did it, it's like as soon as I did it and gave it away, I was like, it's like the Lord turned on my head. It was like, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Stupid. Got you. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, you know, how long? You gonna keep going for this? Waited up there. Took three, three, uh, it was three of them, right? Three, three, three offerings? Three offers that day. Blatant, man. A wonderful and a horrible thing is committed land. Probably prophesied falsely. The priest bear ruled by their means. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't finish that. Finish that, brother. Go ahead. And my people love to have it so. And my people love to have it so. We love it. We love it. The power of brainwashing, man, it is, um, it is amazing to me, man. You come and tell somebody plainly, listen. Listen, brother. That brother's a false prophet. That's, that sister's a false prophet. Hey, brother, you can't judge nobody. Yeah, um... Listen, I ain't judging the brother to hellfire, bro, but the proof is in the piddle, is in the pu pudding. The Lord said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Is that brother going to, you know, four commandments is you keep the Sabbath day. Well, we do keep, listen, we do keep the Sabbath day. It's Sunday. Listen, brother, go take the brother to the, got a cell phone. Take your cell phone, put it on the calendar. It has an S and an S. Count it, brother. People sit, people sit right there and look at it and be like, well, that's your interpretation. I'd be like, <laughs> no problem. No problem. Thank you, brother. I like no problem. But it is what it is. Because he just got truth. She just got truth. I can't get you can't get mad. I don't get frustrated, but you can't get mad because it is what it is. Lord, we're letting this his truth is going to go forth. It said this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached to all nations for witness unto them, and then the end is going to come. So all that you're doing, you're telling them is just being a witness to them, witnessing, witnessing. You keep moving. We plant seeds. One man plant, another man water. Who gives the increase? Uh, all right, then. Or, or he don't. So there it is. Um, so everybody got to bear their own burdens. The priests prophesy falsely. They bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. Everybody's going to get what they got coming to them. Because didn't Christ say he's going to come with his angels and he's going to reward everybody according to their works. So nobody's going to be, if you can't stand in front of the Lord and say, my pastor told me this. You know, join him right over there in the lake of fire. Go join him. You see him over there. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go to Isaiah. Let me start to come down. We've got a few more to go. Go to Isaiah chapter 3. Because the madness does not stop there. And out the mouth of two or three witnesses shall 
a fact be established that we are a hard-headed and wicked nation, and the Lord did not curse us for naught. But praise God that he has a remnant that's waking up and doing what we need to do. It's not always doom and gloom, but somebody's going to get right. And I pray to God, I pray to God that is what? Um, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. We're going to skip around right here. Come on, just a few things to consider, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, brother. When you get there, go ahead. For behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem mm -hmm. and from Judah the stay and the staff, okay. the whole staff of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, mm -hmm. and the eloquent orator. The eloquent orator. Those that can speak real well. The Lord's going to take away all that from us. Now, we was once a nation that was full of the knowledge of God. Dealing with the curses, then, you know, you know we're going to be a, we're people robbing spoil. We're all hidden in prison houses. So what, the men are out of the houses. The women, well, we'll read into it. Go ahead. Keep on reading, brother. Four. Mm -hmm. And I will give children to be their princess, and babies shall rule over them. Yeah, yeah. This, was, this, is, this is our plight, because we didn't want to do what the Lord said he'd do. Now, instead of having people in their right places, instead of having men where they need to be at, and, and the priests where they need to be at, okay, well, since y'all want to be this way, then we're going to have children to be over top of you. Mm -hmm. We're going to have your, your women to rule. Things are going to be all out of order now. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Go ahead. And the people shall be oppressed, every one, of, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. And a child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Ain't that what's happening to us all right now, all over the place? You can't tell, you can't tell nobody anything today. Because mm -mm. everybody know it all. Everybody know it all. You're oppressed by your neighbor. You can't come. You just, listen, brother. Pull your pants up, brother. I knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you just can't go into the interview with your pants down like that, brother. Don't worry about it, brother. <laughs> See, you got unemployment, brother. You know... Skip on, brother. Where are we at? Eight. Skip the eight, brother. For Jerusalem is ruined. Jerusalem is ruined, man. Go ahead. And Judah has fallen. Uh huh. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Mm hmm. That's what we do. The Lord said, I stand all day long to a nation that provokes me to anger continuously to my face. They provoke the Lord all the time, right to his face. That's, that's how brazen we are. Lord did all he had to do for us, and then we're going to sit right there and, you know, turn our back on the Lord. Like, it wasn't like he was far away. He's right in our midst. That's, that, that's how we are. That's how I know when he says that we're a stiff-necked nation, that we stiff-necked. He means that because the Lord's sitting right in the midst of us, and we got idols. First commandment, second commandment, we got idols in our house. We got idols underneath our bed. We got idols in our heart. You think the Lord can't see that? This is how brazen we are as a people. So check yourself. This is just a few things to consider. I, 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 Lord, have me put this couch. Think about it. Go ahead, brother. Where you at? No. Go ahead. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. Do it. Go ahead. And they declare their sin as Sodom. Brazen. They don't care. Go ahead. They hide it not. They hide it not. Go ahead. Woe well unto their soul. Why? For they have rewarded an evil unto themselves. That's what they do. Gay person. Flamboyant. Used to be in the closet, flamboyant, strutting across, strut across you, and you look at them like, come on, bro. They look at you like, what you looking at? Why are you straight? <laughs> like, that ain't the way to be. <laughs> it's crazy to me. They, 
They show the show of their confidence does witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto the soul, for they have warded evil unto themselves. Keep going, brother. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. We read that earlier, right? The righteousness of the righteous shall deliver him, right? Proverbs, we read that earlier. The righteousness of the righteous shall deliver him, but the wicked is the wickedness. The wicked shall not prolong their days. Go ahead, brother. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. Right. The reward of his hand shall be given him. <laughs> As for my people. What happened? Children are their oppressors. Go ahead. And women rule over them. Mm-hmm. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of, their, of thy paths. There it is. They which lead thee cause thee to error. Y'all better be sure about who's teaching you. Be sure about who, who y'all sitting up under, man. Brothers and sisters. Make sure, make sure that they line upon line, line upon line. If the Lord brought you out of darkness, which is that uh, Babylon, world system, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that stuff, first day of the week, I can eat whatever. If he brought you up out of that, then just stay right here. Stay right here where you where where you can grow. Well, my wife was, my wife was talking, this, talking this morning. She was like, you know what? I don't mess with everybody's teaching. She stick she stick with strictly Israel. What, 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 what she what she first learned, that's where she go. If I start bearing off and getting off into anything else, you say, and I get confused, I have to turn right back quick because you don't want to get nothing in there that's going to throw you off. And then she asked her husband at home, "What's going? On? What's happening?" Stay grounded, brothers and sisters. Stop trying to look and find some new thing. Stop trying to find something that have your itching ears. And stay grounded in, in this word of God, in the simplicity of the word of God. Check yourselves before you wreck yourselves. Just respect yourselves. All right. Is that it, brother? That's what? Yeah, we're on 13. Go Go ahead, brother. The Lord standeth up to plead, and the, and the standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have... Excuse me. Yeah, I'm right. Go ahead, brother. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Say if the Lord ghost of God of hosts. The Lord God of hosts. So now, the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancient of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. If you're not thinking about the prosperity preacher when I'm reading this, I don't know what y'all thinking about. Go out here and work, and they so greedy. They tell you to tithe. Don't tithe off of what you bring home. You tithe off the net. I'm like, bro, hold on, bro. And it, it's bad for you when you pay child support. So, you know, they already taking, <laughs> they taking, off the, they, they t- taking theirs off the top. So I get paid $400. I get paid $400. I bring home a, a, bucks, a buck 50 after the taxes, after child support. Then they say, you tithe off the 400 Hold on, home. I didn't even see that, but people go for that, man. My people love to have it so. Ain't that what the Lord said? My people love it. They love the lie rather than the truth. Okay. Let's keep going, brother. James. James. Go further. Go further. James chapter 1. I'm be closing. We're getting ready to close on down. Y'all still with me? James chapter 1. It's a few things to consider about yourself, about this walk. <clears throat> Go ahead. James chapter 1, verse 1. One through four, we're going to skip around a couple places. I hope you all really consider this, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. 
James chapter 1, when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. James, a servant of God and of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Go ahead. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, this is the, this is the uh, flip side of this coin right here. You know, no, did I do something wrong all the time? That I'm going through what I'm going through? Maybe not. Maybe it's just you got to get tried and tested. Let me see how far you going to go for, for this walk. Are you going to get down for your crown? If a little bit of temptation comes to you, a little bit of temptation comes or a little bit of trial comes to you, are you going to fold under pressure? Because the word says, you know, he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You got to endure everything till the end. You can't faint. And you're trying is to, like the Lord said, he that's in me, you know what I mean? The father purges him so that he can bring forth more fruit. So it may be something in you that you don't know about that's displeasing the Lord. The Lord don't like it. So he brings this trial, he brings this tribulation on you so that he can purge you of it so that you can be a better fruit unto him, a first fruit unto him. My brother, count it all joy when you should fall into diverse temptation. Go ahead, brother. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith were with patience. Go ahead. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Mm -hmm. Or lacking nothing. Let your patience be, have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Switch on over and go to uh, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Why? For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right. The Lord, that, that goes without being saying. Skip down to 22, brother. 18. I'm sorry. 18. Go ahead, brother. Of his own will be gat he. Of his own will be gat. He us with all of the. Of his own will. Begat he, go ahead. Thank you. Begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. So like we said, and like I always say, you know what? None of us chose the Lord. He chose us. Let the Lord open up your eyes to come into this truth. You will still be out there doing what you're doing, enjoying the pleasures of sin. So like the Bible says, of his own will, God's will, his own will, not your will. You didn't sit up and say, I'm going to follow the Lord and do all this. No, the Lord put it on your heart to open your eyes and say, I'm going to follow the Lord and do his, what, do his will. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. Because that's what we study, the word of truth. We don't study the false stuff. We deal with the Bible here, brothers and sisters. Amen. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his <clears throat> creation. Ain't that what we're going for? That's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for that to be the first fruit. We're looking for in the part that's God and we get this body or if we sleep in, or if we sleep that we're going to raise up. All right. Go uh, skip to 22. In order to do that though, you got to do something. Go ahead, brother. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. I see y'all sitting out there. I hear y'all. Y'all hear it, don't y'all? Y'all hear me. Y'all hear the word. But the Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Go ahead. Deceiving your own self. Deceiving your own self. Don't think just because you're sitting here and you happen to get up on the Sabbath day that you will shoe in. Mm. Mm -hmm. You better do this word, brothers and sisters. Because the Lord is uncanny for proving you. Proving the words of your mouth. Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. Lord, I'll Lord, I die for you. Okay. He did say that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Didn't Peter say, I'll follow you, Lord? The Lord said, look, man, for the cock crow, bro, you're going to have to die me thrice. I'm sure Peter was in himself like, nah, not me. Till that heat came on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, you one of them. Peter, Peter started cussing like, look, I told you, man. I ain't <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Went and cried, man. Mm -hmm. The Lord told him, though. The Lord said, listen, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. So he knew that he was going to come and do it. But I have prayed for you that when you return, he knew he was going to repent, that you strengthen the brethren. So, 
Just think about it. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Go ahead, why? For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Mm -hmm. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, uh -huh. this man shall be blessed in his deed. Uh-huh. Go ahead. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth that not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. It's vain. So we can't be out here, you know, cussing people out and walking around with a, a trailer park mouth. Lord, checking me, man. <laughs> check me, check me. Check, baby, check. You checking me, man. So listen, this is a double-edged sword up here. I ain't gonna get up here and teach you anything that I'm not supposed to be doing for myself. That's foolish. If any man be among you seem to be religious and brother not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. What's the religion that we need to be doing? Read 27, brother. Pure religion and undefiled there. Of undefiled before God and the Father is this. To, do to what? visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Go ahead. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion. Here we go again. The fatherless and the widows. You'd be just like your father is supposed to be doing. Keep yourself unspotted from this world. All right, we're going to go a little bit further. I was trying to finish this thing. I'm getting close. Turn to Galatians. Galatians. Y'all with me out there? You still here? All right, you know. I'm tripping. Galatians. Come on, buddy. All right, Galatians 6, two verses here, Galatians 6, <sighs> 7 through 10, and when you get there, brother, go ahead. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh -huh. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Pretty simple. God's not mocked. Whatever you reap, you're going to sow. Whatever you speak, it's going to come right back to you. It's not mocked. So if you feel you call yourself being on the Lord's side, and you, you know, brother, you know, I, I pray for you, brother and sister, you don't go home and pray for him. Come on. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Nine. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Let for, us not be weary in well-doing. Why? For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Go ahead. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them which are of, of the household of faith. Which are of the household of faith. We're supposed to be good, try to be good to all men, especially those which are in the household of faith. Our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters, these are closer, they're closer than your own family that you grew up with. Mm -hmm. This is the household of faith, so you're supposed to be really good to them. Mm -hmm. Even more so than your own mother at home, and, and those that, that's not in the word. Lord say, who, who is my mother, who is my brother, but those that do the will of my Father in heaven. Right? Okay, you know, just want to make sure you're here. Be not deceived again. God is not mocked. For whatever a man reaps, that he will so. So, he that... For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We're going to keep on going forward. Go to 2 Corinthians. We are almost out of here. I'm trying to cut it. 2 Corinthians. Right above, right before. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5. We are almost out of here. When you get there, brother, 
Go ahead and start. Verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. That's right. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, That's what, yeah. not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, mm -hmm. but by manifesting of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's what we're supposed to do. So we don't handle the word deceitfully. We don't handle it with craftiness. We, excuse me. We speak truth and we teach truth. And in the sight of men, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to walk worthy of our calling and our vocation, like my brother read earlier today. Uh, keep going, brother. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Uh huh. In whom the, the God of this world. That's little G, ain't it? That's little G, right? Mm -hmm. Big G's our God. So good. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Because what we say to people, we speak truth. And if they can't see it, go ahead, keep reading. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of the God, should shine unto them. So it makes, it makes sense now. When you start reading with understanding, it makes sense now why people can't hear you sometimes. They can't hear what you're saying. He said, why can't you, Jesus said to the, the, the Pharisee, why, you can't, why can't you hear my words? You can't hear my speech? Oh, oh. You are of your father, the devil. <laughs> That's why you don't hear me. Go ahead. For we preach not ourselves. We preach on ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord. Uh -huh. And ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. All right, skip to eight. We are troubled on every side. Right. Yet not distressed. Come on. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Go ahead. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Uh -huh. Cast down, but not destroyed. Go ahead. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the, the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. That's all right. So this is all what's happening to us every day, all of us around here. You know what I mean? That's why we're supposed to pray for one another. We're supposed to lift one another up. And we're supposed to share our burdens with one another. We're supposed to, because we're here battling this thing together. We're supposed to be sharpening up one another. Amen. You know, and, you know I, and I had to learn that with myself. You know, I try to keep things, you know what I mean? I don't want to burden y'all with my problems and everything. You know what I mean? Operate with understanding. Sometimes you're supposed to do that. The Bible says uh, we, are, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Why? Because the Lord gives you peace that passes all understanding through your trials and through your tribulation. Because you know if you're doing what the Lord say to do, he's going to help you through this thing. All right? Um, we are perplexed, but not in despair. How am I going to make it happen? What's going to happen? The Lord's going to work it out. See, you first kingdom of God and his righteousness, he's going to work it all out. All other things gonna be added unto you. Cast down, but not destroyed. We fall. Well, how many? How many times did just man fall? Just man falls seven times. Seven times, but he get back up, don't he? Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So as he died, we're dying, and guess what? As he rules, we gonna rise if we do what we're supposed to do. Go ahead, brother. 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Isn't it? That's why you're supposed to stay meditating on this word day in and day out. He who meditate on this word is going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It's going to bring forth his fruit in his season. You know what I mean? You stay meditating on the word, you stay planted in the word, you're going to be fine. Uh, go ahead, brother. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and ex eternal weight of glory. Isn't that right? This light affliction that we're going through, and it is light. When you think about the grand scheme of things, all of our suffering, all of our problems, every, all of our heartache, you know what I mean? It's a light affliction compared to the fact that if you do this thing the right way, you become God. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. Keep going, brother. While we look not at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporal. Go ahead. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That's that Godhood. We don't see that, but you know what? That's eternal. That's what we're working towards. Okay, one more, one more thing and uh, one more place and then we out of here. We out of here. 13, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 
2 Corinthians 13 and 5. And when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. Know that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And that right there, brothers and sisters, is a few things to consider. And I hope you get some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. We have our Sabbath day announcements. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increase your knowledge of the Holy Bible. Audio and videotapes, CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lessons and of thy kingdom come are available. Write your order on an offering envelope and it will be filled next Sabbath. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the, on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should remove hats and all head coverings during service times. Women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or a scarf, during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting uh, pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in an offering envelope and deposit it in the offering box. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you next Sabbath. Peace. Peace, peace. All right. Is there anything, brother? Baptism next week, before the Sabbath. We try to get it done before the Sabbath. September 3rd, we're trying to work for it. Okay, so that's what it is. Bap baptism trying to be for September 3rd. My brother, you in it? You in here, brother? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Where my sister at? Where's she at? She in here. All right.